We're working our way through part 3 of this 5 kilowatt monster e-bike build. This episode we're creating a custom lighting control dashboard and it is a ton of work so let's go. On the last episode, we left off with a slight problem with my throttle connector, and it left me and my cat quite disappointed. This build has definitely been fighting me all the way with every little step just just making it a little more difficult than it needs to be. Thankfully I had some extra cables and connectors laying around and that's only due to the fact that I had a failed experiment in one of my previous episodes where I tried to add an LCD screen to a controller that wouldn't accept it. I thought this was going to be a very easy fix because all I needed to do was change the gender on the connector. The internal colored wire even match right up and this will leave an unsightly heat shrink section but I'm okay with it as long as it works. One would think that these would have a standard where they would be interchangeable with different controllers and things like that but that unfortunately isn't the case. And almost finishing up with this modification right here and let's test it out and see if it works. Well it plugs in but it didn't work. Thankfully I still have the original throttle that came with this particular controller. So I can do side by side comparisons with the old and the new throttle and see what is going on, what is the difference here. And unfortunately I am not seeing any difference between the range of the throttle when you twist it on both of them. So I am pretty stumped at this point. So I'll have to come back to this problem. But I still have plenty of things to do especially regarding wiring on this bike. On the last episode I made all of those RGB strips. There was like seven of them. So now all of those leads have to be tied together so they can converge into one point which is the LED controller. I debated in my mind if I wanted to add a bus bar to make all these connections. That would certainly make things a lot cleaner and easier to do at this portion of the wiring. But I figured nobody's going to see it and then I don't have to buy a bus bar if I just solder them directly together. I'm basically reducing down 56 wires into four individual wires and I made this harder on myself by not giving myself enough leads to twist around and bundle together. I managed to get it done somewhat cleanly with the help of some pins that I crimped together. The hardest part was threading through the electrical tape as insulation. This is an easy spot for things to become short-circuited very quickly and I wanted to make sure that that was not going to happen. So keeping all of those individual bundles separate at this point was very important. And almost finished wrapping this part up and then we can test out the lights and hopefully they all work because I do not want to rip this apart again. So what do you think? Is it going to work? And success! It actually works. All the colors work correctly and all of the strips work correctly also. Now I just need to install the mounts for the custom dash I will be creating so that we can control the lights from the dashboard. Here you can see my designs and iterations from the top to the final at the bottom. Some of the dimensions and assets I have repurposed from my previous e-bike build. Once I had the placements of the shapes I moved on to some graphics that I'm going to be etching into the acrylic and after working with that prototype and making sure everything was correct I moved on to the final piece. This is just the prototype and I'm making it out of extruded acrylic. Once we know this all fits correctly and adding any tweaks I can then make the final piece out of cast acrylic. To help tie in the piece I'm etching the digi camo shapes from the original stencil that I used to paint with. It should come out really cool with the LED edge lighting. We're almost done with cutting so let's see how it turned out. Not bad for the first prototype, it does look like everything is going to work in terms of graphics and also the dimensions but we won't know till we actually build the thing. Now we just want to run a test to make sure the toggle switches actually fit in the holes. And they do. Since the handlebars are angled I'm going to have to shape the acrylic so that it sits flush against the mounts. And that should be pretty easy with a heat gun, but I just have to make sure I don't overdo it. The bend here is very slight, and that's all we need. And now to tackle actually building the thing. This dashboard is going to provide all of the lighting controls. I initially thought my design was wrong because this was not lining up with the posts here. I did want the green side of the PCB to be visible through the dashboard, but I don't know if this was on purpose or an accident or if I just built it this way, but I inverted it, so it could have been conscious, I don't remember at this point. But my original design prototype was correct and that could have been an accident, although it doesn't really matter because I would have just fixed it in the final design. 
I did want to make the dashboard modular so that I could just unplug one plug and remove it. So I'm just using a 6 pin PCI Express extension cable. You just cut the extension in half and then you have a male and female 6 pin plug on either side with leads. I'm labeling each wire on both sides so I don't go crazy later when I don't know what wire goes to what. It's worth taking the small amount of time to label things because you will spend a lot more time if you forget something. And keeping with the blue blue theme, I bought some toggle switches that are illuminated that are also blue. Admittedly, I didn't really have a plan for this next part. I know I wanted it to ultimately look clean, but getting to that point was somewhat chaotic. Also this LED would look better on the other side of the board so you can see it through the dashboard. Having a plan is almost always going to make things a lot faster and easier, but that doesn't always work when you're kind of creating at the same time, so you can't really plan for things while you're creating them in the moment. All I really knew was six wires needed to come in and six wires needed to go out. I couldn't help but stuff more LEDs on this because it's the LED controller and it has so many extra pads, I was like, I can easily stuff more LEDs on top of this. And since the dashboard is clear, it it will look cool with more LEDs going on. And I'm getting close to being able to test it and make sure that it is at least getting power and the wires that I have applied are working correctly. I also found these cheap little voltage readouts. This doesn't really provide any functional useful value but I just thought it was another cool design element. And now that I have most of the main wiring correct, I wanted to match it up to the dashboard and see how everything was laying out. Like these illuminated elements weren't even part of the initial design, so seeing how they're going to fit with the dash above them and doing all that all at the same time, trying to make the wiring as neat as possible. It was just a lot of different things happening and going on at the same time, which is why I had to kind of make something and then redo it and then refine it and just keep making more iterative passes like that. So the right toggle is going to control the RGB lighting and then the left toggle switch is going to independently control the headlight. The three RGB potentiometers will allow you to turn the lights completely off but I also wanted them on a separate toggle so that if you pick the color that you wanted you can just turn it off and turn it back on without having to redial in whatever specific color that was. I probably could have used some thinner wires for the headlight but I wanted to err on the side of caution. Although it would have made soldering and running these wires a lot easier if they were smaller. I'm trying to make these runs as short as possible mainly so that they look nicer. I didn't want a bunch of extra wire coiled up or zip tied or flopping around anywhere but custom fitting each wire so that it is as short as possible and looks as nice as possible is much more challenging. Okay next I'm getting into headlight number two. If you guys recall from a previous episode, I already messed up the first headlights I tried to implement on this bike. This headlight also came with a battery pack which I also wanted to bypass like I did the first ones. And maybe it's something about lights that want to run off battery power that when I try to convert them they don't want to work for me. Yeah, I'll come back to this light in a little bit. Let's just say that it was also problematic. Trying to make the wires as clean as possible was by far the most challenging part of this dashboard build, especially the larger power wires. And almost done finally wrapping up the larger power wires that go to the toggle switches. It's always a pain when you try to solder two or three different wires onto the same pad. Okay so back to the headlight. What was the issue? The headlight worked fine, it's just that I wanted to add my own toggle power switch to it. This created a problem because it uses battery and that required it to have a soft switch. So just applying power to it with a toggle is not going to turn the light on. So now I'm trying to figure out how to get it to turn on when power is applied to it. I first tried just jumping some pins on the timer chip, which in theory should have worked. So then I found a way to just jump it directly. And it actually worked off my toggle, you saw it right there, but then it just died. And it never was to be brought back again unfortunately. That's two for two with headlights. So far I still have no throttle and no headlights. But don't worry, I am determined to find solutions. Okay, now we're starting to get progress and things are looking cleaner. But I did test it on the bike and there's some things I want to change. I didn't like how the 6 pin wires were coming out the back of the dashboard. They ended up hitting the forks when coming straight out the back so now I wanted them to route down under. And I was completely fighting with the sleeving the whole time. It was just 
making it really hard to do those sharp bends with the wire. And then it didn't want to curl under the PCB, so I said, screw it, I'm just taking off the stupid sleeving. And once I did that, these wires were much easier to work with. So let me reroute these and then we'll see where we're at. As I said before, trying to design this with all the wiring very clean, it just takes a lot of iterations and there's a lot of elements at play at the same time. So wire it up initially, then see where you can make some improvements and make the wire shorter. Make another pass and then just keep repeating that until it's all cinched down and perfect. I probably wasn't ready for the hot glue just yet, but I thought I was. I was having quite the time trying to figure out where I could put this voltage indicator. The leads that came with it are pretty short and I didn't want to lengthen them with another section of wire, so I figured maybe I could route it more easily over the PCB underneath all the other stuff. Okay, that works, and it is hanging off of the PCB, so I built a little shelf out of hot glue for it. Refining things this way is kind of like a puzzle, especially when you start stacking things on top of each other. Some people absolutely detest doing wiring or looking at wiring or figuring out wiring, but I actually like it. I think it's pretty cool. And finally, after a lot of iterations, the vast majority of these wires are in their correct spot. All that's left is to refine the main power wires going to the toggles, and I believe I am done. Right when I thought I was finished, I was looking at these little white wires and they were kind of hanging out below the dashboard and I was thinking, maybe I can clean these ones up too. And the only way to really do that was to glue the potentiometers to the PCB because trying to make tight runs with tiny little wires while the pots are flopping around was not going to work. So I cinched things down and then glued the pots in place so that they wouldn't move on me while I was cleaning up those tiny little white wires. Now that that is set, I can disassemble again and start trying to clean these up. These little wires were very frustrating to work with. They were super brittle and they would start tearing and ripping at any of the solder points which made trying to make them a lot smaller and shorter very frustrating. I knew I could do it, but having to make and remake tiny little pieces because they kept breaking and then I already made them at the right length and then they would break so that they would be too short, then I'd have to cut another one and repeat that process. It was quite tedious and annoying, so I thought of what else could I do to make this easier on myself. My electronics genius neighbor, I can remember vividly when I was younger and he would build these um, guitar amps and he would make use of a lot of solid core wire. So he would run all these wires in 3D space and they would all be wrapping around each other and they none of them were touching but they were like suspended in midair. And I always thought that that just looked really cool. So I'm trying to replicate that here with some solid core wire but it is nowhere near the masterful execution of his amplifiers. But had I not seen those then I wouldn't even had it in my mind that this was a possibility. Because most modern electronics, you do not even see the wires anymore. It's all printed on a circuit board. But most electronics pre-mid-1970s look like bowls of spaghetti full of wires. This would have looked a lot cooler if the input pins and the output pins were symmetrical to each other, but I don't know if it's because I flipped the PCB or not, but they do not line up correctly. Which is fine, it's just that they would have looked even cleaner. Although it does look pretty cool with them like spiraling around each other. I know it looks like a short circuit waiting to happen, but unless you crush this with like a high impact, these wires are not going to go anywhere. We're just using air as an insulator instead of plastic. It's fine. And after a massive amount of wiring, I think that the at least the electronic parts of this dashboard are finally completed. Just a little more cleanup and then you can check it out. I think it looks awesome. It took a long time, but it was well worth the effort.
Now assemble it again for the hundredth time and we'll stick it on the bike. It fits and everything clears and everything looks like it is where it should be. And now all we have to do is run all the wires to the dashboard. I have to say, after doing all of this wiring, I was really looking forward to getting nearer and nearer the end of it. So it was very exciting for me to know that these were some of the last wires that I had to solder and connect together. I don't even really want to know how many wires I have stripped so far on this bike, but it's a lot. Hopefully we are done with this connector now. That's a lot of heat shrink. Can you imagine the horror if I turn this on right now to test it and it doesn't work? But thankfully the e-bike gods have smiled upon us in all of our wiring mischievousness. It works. It really works. Time to clean up and then figure out what to do with all of these bundles of wires now. I can't make these too tight or else the forks won't turn, so I have to compromise between clean but then having some of them out of the casing. All that effort to make it modular was worth it. Look at how cool that is. Just two screws, one plug, and it's out of there. This is still just the prototype acrylic and there are a few things I still want to tweak, but I was curious to see how it looked in all of its clear glory. It was a lot of work to get to this point, but I think it turned out really cool. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We are well past the halfway point now and I can see the end in sight. Just a few more things to address and then we can finally ride. We're buttoning up the headlight and the front end and also completing the dash in its final form. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.